the new 300 series writes another chapter in the Land Cruiser story that began 70 years ago in 1951 and has serviced generations of Australian adventurers, farmers and industrialists. The Land Cruiser name was just three years old when the Japanese four-wheel drive made its first appearance in Australia's snowfields for the massive Snowy Mountains hydroelectric scheme in the late 1950s. Impressing operators with its robust capacity for off-road work, the second generation Land Cruiser 20 series was picked up for distribution in Australia by Leslie Teese, the owner of Teese Constructions. Within a few short years, the third gen Land Cruiser of 1960 had become the darling of the nation's primary industries. The 40 series remained in production well into the 1980s, but the wagon variant was dropped when Toyota launched the more luxurious 55 series Land Cruiser in the late 1960s. A vehicle styled and equipped more like what we expect from a modern SUV, the 55 series nonetheless carried over the ultra reliable mechanicals of the 40 series and maintained the Land Cruiser's go anywhere and come back reputation. From the introduction of the 55 series, Toyota split its Land Cruiser sub-brand along two different paths. Comfortable off-road wagons on one hand and hard-working commercials on the other. While the 40 series soldiered on in utility, troop carrier and short wheelbase versions, the 55 series Land Cruiser was replaced by the 60 series generation in the early 1980s. And the stylish new wagon was offered with turbocharged diesel power for the first time in 1985. Before then, in 1984, the venerable 40 series Land Cruiser was replaced by the angular but purposeful 70 series. The Land Cruiser family grew again in the 1980s with the 73 series mid wheelbase line joining the 60 series and the 70 series models to target younger recreational buyers. Toyota Australia subsequently dropped the 73 series in favour of the Prado, which proved to be more popular. A new era of weekend adventure and grey nomad tourism was ushered in with the 1990s and the arrival of the bigger, rounder, more sophisticated 80 series Land Cruiser, which was the successor to the 60 series. Newer, more efficient powertrains flowed into the 80 series and 70 series variants during the 1990s, but these were stopgaps waiting for the 100 series Land Cruiser of 1998. Roomier inside, safer and more aerodynamic, the 100 series introduced a Lexus-derived petrol V8 and independent front suspension for the 105 variants. After nine years, the 100 series was replaced by the 200 series in 2007. This new generation of Land Cruiser introduced active anti-roll bars, crawl control, and an all V8 powertrain range, petrol and diesel. Upgraded engines, different body styles, and new visual cues have been introduced at intervals to the 70 series range, right up to the current day. The variants available in 2021 are the 76 series wagon, the 78 series troop carrier, and the 79 series utes and cab chassis models. All are powered by the same diesel V8 that resides under the bonnet of the 200 series. Toyota facelifted the 200 series Land Cruiser for the 2016 model year, but the changes were comparatively minor to tide the veteran model over until its replacement five years down the track. The Land Cruiser wagon faces meagre competition from its arch rival, the Nissan Patrol, which struggles to steal many sales from the Land Cruiser without diesel power. As for the 70 series, rumours of its demise have proved premature, with Toyota insisting there will be a new generation replacement. And now, the 300 series reinvents the Land Cruiser formula once more, by being lighter and more powerful, with twin turbo V6 power and eventually an electrified powertrain under the bonnet. Never known for being economical or eco-friendly, the Land Cruiser has nevertheless earned itself plaudits for being evergreen and the 300 series does promise to be kinder to the environment as it slogs, grinds and wades its way through it.